We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Welcome back to our Really Radio, episode 130D, Good Ideas. This is for um, <clears throat> recorded Friday, October 28th, 2016. And uh, let's see, what do we have? What do we have? Um, <laughs> this kind of leads back into the, the law, uh, but not so much. But I'll go ahead and give it a... Uh, anyway, so... <clears throat> DOJ com complaint filed against the FBI director, James Comey, for interfering in presidential elections. So, this all really came out today, didn't it? I believe so. Today, yes, the, this today, yeah. the out, Starting about 1 o'clock Eastern time is when yeah. all this started dropping. Yeah, the ink isn't even dry from the printer yet. Yeah, especially even, you know, once the retraction started coming in, too. This is hot. Yeah, uh, they found emails from the Anthony Weiner investigation, which I thought that that was all over and done with. I thought that that dude was done deal and that had all ended. And they found something in his email, and it caused them to reopen the case against Hillary Clinton. But they but they found didn't. we don't know. But they didn't see. That's that's the weird thing. They had started yeah. to open it up, and then it didn't actually happen. It was all jumping the gun. Mm -hmm. so, well, but the they got the I'm headline saying, that was uh, reopened. Right. I, I've heard multiple things here. Um, the one that actually, to me, strikes as the most probable reason, because, again, as of this show and as of today, which is October 28th, we are 11 days out from the election. Um. I was watching some MSNBC podcast or broadcasts earlier, mm -hmm. and the thing they were saying, which I can kind of agree with when it comes to, again, everybody's going, why did he do this now? Even if all the evidence and information and stuff is there, and this can be reopened and prosecution goes against Hillary, a case could not be compiled and then actually fought through before the election occurs. Yeah, there's So not why time. now? And the best explanation I've heard so far is, it was a political move on his part. Not like I'm trying to sway one way or another, but the idea of the, you know, possibly wants to keep his job and wants to stay in the position because I can kind of agree. Um, as sad as it is, that if he had waited until after the election to push the to, uh, yeah, push this out until after the election, um, at, in the current climate that's career suicide for what the position he's in. Because you have to deal with a lot of politics at that point. He would have been done. Mm. This means he might still have a job. But I don't know. It's... Again, I know, I've also listened to a bunch of people who are saying, you know, this is actually... From a prosecutorial standpoint, is one of the stupidest things you can do because we don't have any real information going... There's a lot of... This might be something. There may be something here. Who knows? And, um, yeah, the, the pure vagueness of it is going, why, why are you doing this? We have no actual information or evidence. What the hell is your point in doing this? And it was, um, it was mostly jumped on by, I think it was a senator. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull through, pour through all the emails and everything that came through today that were just ridiculousness. Gowdy? Uh, that sounds right. My money's on Gowdy. Uh, let's see. He will have a special place as the head witch hunter under the Trump campaign. Yeah, I think this is the one. Okay, so. <clears throat> uh, the new Clinton email scandal keeps getting worse for Republicans as new information is emerging that the emails the FBI is looking at were not on her server. Um... From previous reporting, it is known that the emails have nothing to do with Clinton, her campaign, the Clinton Foundation, the Russian hacks, the State Department, or any emails she sent or received. Now, <laughs> we know that the, that the emails were not on her server. FBI Director Comey uh, completely bungled this announcement, 
And he needs to explain what the FBI is analyzing because it doesn't sound like it has anything to do with Hillary Clinton. The email scandal that Republicans thought would have saved them has evaporated nearly as quickly as it arrived. With each new development, it is clear that there is much less to do with story than initially reported. If the Republican Party wants to risk losing even more House and Senate seats in 11 days by pursuing this non-story, they should feel free and have at it. <laughs> well... In a way, the damage is already done because all the meme generators have already picked up this story and just run with it as though it were 100% fact. Hey, they, they found the, the, well, the smoking it will work, bullet. It will work for those that were already convinced that she's the Antichrist. You know, nothing gained there. What they're, well, they're, it might they're work fighting for, for some the people on some people that are just, you know, tangentially watching the election from the side they will vote their undecideds who aren't paying too much attention and definitely aren't going to actually validate it and just say oh there's another one can i really trust this clinton chick mm, maybe i can see some of those people being swayed by this that's possible it, it, it's one of the things I'm saying, this, this might have maybe a couple point swing in certain states where it's, you know, the people who were not necessarily with, with Clinton, but were kind of going to stay against, you know, against Trump might, the ones who weren't the hardliners or more scared of Trump might now shift to a third party or not vote because, you know, what's the point, which makes it easier for, uh, of course, easier for Trump to actually win. He needs less people than at that point. Yeah, it, may, it turns the election back into more of a nail biter than it was. CNN Which for... confirms that James Co uh, Comey violated FBI policy today by trying to sabotage Hillary Clinton. Huh. Just his career might be over anyway. It well maybe. He may he may simply have to fall on his sword to get out of it. Yeah. That may be all there is to it. I can't wait for 2020 to try to top this election. No, again, no, don't, don't, tempt going, don't tempt them. Don't tempt them. Oh, they're going to. Please let 2020 be try. a completely boring election. I would, at this point, love to have a boring election. Oh, it's, it won't be. It has been too interesting, exciting since. Boring is good. <sighs> Well, I mean, by 2020, we might have the the minor civil war ongoing, so that'll be an interesting election no matter what. Uh, oh, apparently the Rachel Maddow show um, explains it all very well. So, um, yeah, go take a look that. at uh, go take a look at uh, Rachel Maddow where she uh, dissects this for uh, the tripe that it truly is. There's a lot to unpack, I bet. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, probably putting it mildly. So, so let's move on a little bit to, to some, some better news here. And that would be that, you know, we, there was a story that we didn't get to, get to discuss last week. Uh, because really, it, yeah. it was just too, it was too much. It would have just pissed us all off. And, you know, there's only so much of that we can deal with. Yeah. So, <clears throat> there were some overzealous recruiters in California that were offering... Huge sign-on bonuses and re-sign-on bonuses to our to our troops. Um, well, apparently that was completely unauthorized, and now the Pentagon wanted their money back. And they was, should get it from the recruiters. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Well, I also like to say about that is the primary person who authorized all of these payments out, did spend 60 days in jail because of it. Ooh. And that was way back then, when it first happened. Oh, really? Okay. So that actually... So there was something about it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, wow. 60 whole days. Hey. Depending on the <clears throat> institution that you're, um, that you're imprisoned in, that, that, could be, that could be worth something. So, um, this has caused a bit of a uproar, especially when, you know, we're in an election year and we're talking about veterans, people that got convinced to go back to war for us and were paid 
for that for that service, um, and then to take that away after you know that it's enough money to ruin people. People had to t- some some troops had to take out like two or three mortgages on their home to pay it back. Mm-hmm. You know, really ugly stuff. So uh, today was it today? It was no two days ago. Um, the Pentagon has been ordered to stop forcing veterans. Uh, to repay the bonuses. Defense Secretary Ash Carter has ordered the Pentagon to halt the clawback of enlist- enlistment or re-enlistment bonuses. His decision comes in the wake of an angry reaction from members of Congress who demanded he relieve the burden of the Guard members. And the White House said um, President Barack Obama has warned the Defense Department not to nickel and dime service members who were victims of fraud or by overzealous recruiters. Well, the California National Guard notified Congress two years ago that they were try- going to try to do this. Yes. And they did nothing because we have a do-nothing Congress. Yes. So awesome. Well, such a measure wouldn't have never even come up. <clears throat> yeah. You know, under under the directed directive of um, of Boehner... It would have, it would have had to go through his desk to even make a floor vote, and he wasn't going to have that. This makes nope. everybody look bad, so we'll just pass yeah. the buck and not even talk about it. And that is exactly what they did. Now on Tuesday, President Obama ordered an expedited investigation, whatever that means. Um, he's told the Defense Department to expedite its review of the nearly. 10,000 California National Guard soldiers who have been ordered to repay enlistment bonuses improperly given a decade ago. But he's not backing the growing calls for Congress to waive the debts. I found that interesting. So, where's that money going to come from? Got to talk about like a payment plan? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Some of the. I think we should take it out of the six billion that went missing in Iraq. <laughs> just write it off, really. Just write it off. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know, he could probably do that as um, as he's exiting office. Just kind of, you know, pen something to them. You know, waving that yeah. debt. I think he probably could. A little executive order action. A little pardon of the debt. Or whatever. Yeah, so like the president can issue pardons and stays of execution, so why the hell can't he do this? Yeah. Thank you for your service. You know. Please. Thank you for your service. <clears throat> so Yeah. That kind of blows, but you know, at least um at least attention is being paid to it, and I don't think any attention would be paid to it without social media's pressure and and the collective consciousness of of the internet kind of, you know, focusing and saying, This is bullshit. So, good. Pay attention to these little things. Why not? Sign those White House petitions. I'm sure there's probably going to be a petition to, you know, completely waive the debt. But also, you know, hey, it's an election year. How about we change out Congress to a, to a group of people that will actually do something instead of sitting on it for two years? Another two years. And another two years. And two years after that. Ugh. Oh. Nope, nothing changes. No, nothing, nothing really changes. 